for being here this morning. I tell you, um, my God can do anything. My God is, is God. And I praise Him, I worship Him this morning. I thank Him for who He is. I woke up this morning. I was just planning to stay at home. Like I just didn't know how I was going to make it. I was just dragging, dragging, dragging. And then I sat on the sofa and I put my head in my lap and I was talking to the Lord and asking Him to help me. And I just was sitting there and He said one word to me. He said, a whole of a. And I was like, I read that before, somewhere in the Bible. So Marty, can you look it up? And so I read about a whole of us, and I was just laying in there, and I was like, well, Lord, you know, I'm too sick to preach. I don't feel good. And I was like, oh, wait, I do feel better than the way I was feeling. Well, let me get up and start moving around and see. And all the sickness I had just kind of went away. The word just began to form in my spirit. And so I stand before you today. Because I serve the true and living God. Amen. And he has a word for us today. So, if you will, agree with me in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we come before you in Jesus' name. And we thank you that you are God. We thank you for your love for us. Lord, we thank you that we see you through the Bible and history. And even in our lives, pleading with us, Lord. And we thank you for your mercy and for your grace. Yes. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would abide in this place today. Lord, I pray that you will remove the scales from the eyes, Lord, that they will be able to see, Lord God, and unstop the ears that they will be able to hear, Father God. And give them readiness of heart, Lord, that they can receive your word this morning. In the name of Jesus, we bind the power of Satan, Amen. spirit of distraction, hindrance, and sleep. We command you to loose every individual and leave this atmosphere in Jesus' name. Lord, have your way today. Move by your spirit. Bless us today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you would turn with me to Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3, and then we'll drop down to verse 36. It says, The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. They were their breasts pressed, and they their there they bruised the teats of their virginity. And the names of them were Ahola, the elder, and Aholabah, her sister. And they were mine, and they bare sons and daughters. Thus were their names Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem Aholabah. And Ahola played the harlot when she was mine, and she doted her lovers, she doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors. And it goes on to talk about Ahola and Aholaba mm -hmm. being styled as women. They were representing cities, one Samaria and one Jerusalem. And first, Samaria went away looking at her neighbors, the Assyrians, who did not worship God, who did not know the true and living God, but they were idol worshipers. And they did things that were abominations against God. They did things like sacrificing their children and, um, into the fire and just the things that they did in their culture was against God. And this is what Samaria did first. And so God was, his anger, his wrath was against the city, Ahola, because of what they had done. And then it goes on to talk about Ahola by Jerusalem. She did the exact same thing. And you would think that she would look at her sister and say, I'm not going to go down the same path and end up the same fate. But not only did she do the exact same thing, she went after the exact same people, the same Assyrians that caused her sister to sin against God. And so we go down to verse 36. 
And it says, The Lord said moreover more unto me, Son of man, wilt thou judge Ahola and Aholaba? Yea, declare unto them their abominations, that they have committed adultery, and blood is in their hands. And with their idols have they committed adultery, and have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. Moreover this they have done unto me, they have defiled my sanctuary in the same day, and have profaned my Sabbath. For when they had slain their children to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And lo, thus have they done it in the midst of mine house. So God was looking at them. He said, show them their abominations, what they have done. They went going after these other idol gods, and then the same day they come to, to the house of the Lord All right. mm. to try to offer sacrifice to him. And he's saying they're doing this the same day, coming to defile my sanctuary. All right. They had no shame for what they were doing in the life that they were living. Verse 40, he says, And furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from afar, unto whom a messenger was sent. And lo, they came, from whom... Thou didst wash thyself, painted thy eyes, and decked thyself with ornaments, and sat upon a stately bed, and a table prepared before it, whereunto thou hast set mine incense and mine oil. Things are supposed to be offered to the Lord, you doing it for these lovers of yours and these idols of yours. And a voice of a multitude, being at ease, was with her, and with the men of the common sort were at were brought Sabaeans from the wilderness, which put bracelets upon their hands and beautiful crowns upon their heads. Then said I unto her that was old in adulteries, Will they now commit whoredoms with her and she with them? Yet they went in unto her as they go in unto a woman that playeth the harlot. So went they in unto Ahola and unto Aholaba, the lewd women. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses, and after the manner of women that shed blood. Because they are adulteresses, their blood is in their hands. For thus saith the Lord God, I will bring up a company upon them, and will give them to be removed and spoiled. And the company shall stone them with stones, and dispatch them with their swords. And they shall slay their sons and their daughters, and burn up their houses with fire. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of the land, that all women might be taught not to do after lewdness, after your lewdness. And they shall recompense your lewdness upon you, and ye shall bear the sins of your idols, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Amen. And so the Lord... He caused Ezekiel to see what was going on amongst the people. Right. And he said, show them what they're doing that is not pleasing to me. Let them see the abominations. And the people had gotten so comfortable in the way that they were living that they had no conscience of what was right to do. They went out there committing their whoredoms and then they'll come the same day and lift holy hands and say, praise the Lord. He is our Father. They profane the Sabbath. He said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Right. But they did their own things on the Sabbath day, but they, yet they still came before the sanctuary of God. The Lord said to me this morning, a whole about, because the same thing is going on today. He has styled these cities as women and show how it looks for a woman that is married to go in to those that are not her husband and profane herself and then come back before her husband as if everything is okay. And God is saying, it's not okay. I see the filth of your life. I see the idolatry. And he was letting them know, I'm coming back and I'm going to visit you for the evil that you have done. Adultery, um, by definition, is voluntary sexual relations between a married man and woman with someone that is not their spouse. It is an intentional act 
You deliberately committed this act. You've thought about it. You contemplated whether you want to do it or not. You wrestled against the pros and the cons. And eventually you gave in and you committed the act of adultery. Well, the parallel is the same way with Jesus Christ. You see, we are married to, to one. And Christ is married to one, and that is his church. And we are his church, and we are committed to him. And he is the one that we should devote all of our time and all of our desires and all of our efforts into. And when we don't do that and we look for another, then we too can commit adultery. Let's explore a little bit more in the scripture. And let's not forget Aholabah. John 15. Verses 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words about abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And so, see, we see here what Jesus is speaking to us. Amen. And he's telling us, abide in me. Abide in me. Stay in me. He said, you are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. That's how powerful Jesus' word is. It cleans you up. Amen. You are clean through the word that I have spoken. When you believe it and you begin to exercise his word in your life, it begins to clean you up. It begins to change you and Amen. make you into a new creature. And so he says, abide in me and my word abide in you. All right. And so as I was thinking about abiding in him and his word abiding in us, you, you have to know what he said in order for you to abide in it. Okay? And so if, if your mom, you're, you're at, at an age where your mom is leaving you at home and she gets ready to go and she says, remember the house rules, you know, and I'm expecting you to abide by the rules. So when I get back, everything should be in order. And then she leaves and you wonder like, what are the house rules? I don't remember her telling me what to do and what not to do. But if she said that one of the house rules is you can't turn on the stove, you know, when you get hungry and you want a hot dog and the microwave is, is broke, you get to think about, should I turn on the stove? Because I'm hungry. And then you get to thinking about that rule. Mom said, don't turn on the stove. Then you have a choice to make. Am I going to abide? Am I going to stay in what she told me to do? Or am I going to do my own thing? And so you have a decision to make. Right. Well, that's the same thing with Jesus Christ. Right. Except for your decision could be detrimental to your soul. All right. And so he's telling us to abide in my word. And so in Matthew's the fifth chapter, verse 21, I just want to read something he told us to do. He says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time that thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool 
shall be in danger of hell fire. So here are some rules, if you want to say, that Jesus, some standards that he left on record for us to follow and keep in mind. He said it used to be if you kill somebody, you're going to be in danger of judgment. But now I'm telling you this. If you're angry with your brother without a cause, you're going to be in danger of judgment. Amen. And so then when you read this and you hear about this, you realize I can't walk around with attitude. Amen. With my brother or, or with, with a sister in the Lord, you know, or with anybody without a cause. Amen. People of the world do that. They did it in school. I don't like her. Why? It's the new kid. I don't like her. I can't stand her. You don't even know her. That's true. But maybe she's pretty, prettier than you in your eyes, you know, or maybe she has more friends than you do. I don't know. And you become jealous for whatever reason. And so you just say, I don't like her. Well, Jesus said, for us, we are not to have that type of mindset. Amen. We can't just look at people and say, I don't like them. I can't yeah. stand them. That's not a part of who we are when we're abiding in Christ. Right. He said, if you say thou fool, thou shalt be in danger of hell fire. Some people call people fool for no reason. They just plan and just say, oh, he, he just old fool. But Jesus said not to say that. Amen. And so when you read this and you're hearing this, you're like, hmm, I need to be careful about what I call people. Yeah, right. Because Jesus said, I'll be in danger of hell fire. And so you you are training your members to come into subjection right. of the word of God. Right. And you say, oh, no, I'm not going to use that word. You say, oh, Lord, I didn't, I didn't even know that was in there. Please forgive me. I don't want to do that. Right. And so when the situation comes up, you're careful not to say that food. You might call it something else. A clown or something, I don't know. But you're careful not to say that because you want to abide in Jesus. You want to stay in, in the standards that he has set for you to stay in. Amen. He says again, 23, that therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and thou remember if that thy brother hath an ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Right. So now he's saying, if you came to offer praises to the Lord, you come into, and, and some of us can relate, you have bowed in prayer, and you just want to thank him, and you keep feeling this block, like, what's going on? And he keep bringing to you, you know, um, so so-and-so is upset with you because of how you talk to her. And you're like, huh? Okay, well, Lord, I just want to thank you. It just keep on, keep on bothering you. You know, got up from your prayer, and it's just like, okay, what's going on? Jesus said you need to go to them and get it straight. Amen. Then you can come back and offer your praises unto the Lord and whatever gift you want to give to the Lord. So we have to abide in the Word of God. We can't do it any other way. Just to say, oh, well, she'll be all right. I didn't mean it that way, you know. You're bypassing Jesus. You're saying, that's okay, my way is better than your way. But what he's not telling us to do that. He said, abide in me. Right. And my word abides in you. And so we're seeing how he said, you are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. You begin to change how you talk, change how you treat people, because you're beginning to abide Praise in the God. word of God. Amen. 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 When we go after another way, other than Jesus Christ, we become as a hola and a holaba. Right. We become as adulterers, embracing false doctrine as though it were the truth. We may not be bowing ourselves down to a physical statue that we call an idol, but when you submit and agree to something that and allow things to go on in your home and in your life that are against God, you are bowing down to false God. Right. You have not submitted yourself to Christ, but you have submitted yourself to something, and it is not of God. Amen. You become as those that commit adultery. Psalms 119 and 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. 
saying the word of God is what is leading us and guiding us through life. Amen. His word. We don't have any righteousness that is of our own. Righteousness comes from God. Right. One of the uh, prophets says, said, my righteousness is as filthy rags. And so what is good to do comes from God. Amen. And we need to seek him, seek his That's direction, right. search right. the scriptures for what his will and his desire is for us. Amen. He also said that in Proverbs, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Amen. 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 So we need to acknowledge the Lord because the enemy is always trying to get us to go the wrong way. Amen. And we need to submit ourselves to the word of God and nothing else. Amen. There are so many voices that will come and try to get you to go a different direction. You know, whether you're raising your children. And, uh, I don't know why kids that come from a strict household and they grow up and say, I'm not raising my kids like that. <laughs> but that strict household kept you from getting into a lot of trouble. <laughs> you know, you didn't, you didn't run into the pitfalls. Some of your um, friends are in jail or they got three and four baby daddies and different things went on in their life that didn't happen in your life because of your strict upbringing. Amen. And so the enemy has tricked people and say, well, I'm not raising my kids like that. And so you got to be careful what you yield and submit yourself to. Right. Because it's the enemy. And he's after your sons and your daughters. Amen. And you see, as we were reading, if you want to go back and read about Samaria and Jerusalem, Ahola and Aholaba, you'll find that they caused their sons and daughters that were supposed to be for God Amen. to commit adultery. Amen. And to commit adultery. Amen. They caused their children to do things that were abominable against God. When you allow your sons and your daughters to be like the world, when it is clear in the scripture to love not the world, you are bowing down to these idols. You are not submitting yourself to God Amen. and his will for your life and the life of your children. When we submit to God, we obey him. Amen. When we don't obey him, we begin to play the harlot, right. going after those things that are not of God. First John 2 and 15, if you have it, you can read it. First John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Not in him. Amen. Amen. That is so clear. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things that are in the world. He is calling for a separation of his church and the world. Amen. He had to tell us don't love the things that are in the world because there is an attraction that comes through this flesh that makes you want to desire the things of this world. There is an attraction. When you, you try to watch a YouTube video, maybe you're trying to listen to the last message from last week or whatever from Church God Mission, and they pop up a commercial, <laughs> Clairol or Cover Girl, and they just hair just flowing and red and you know the lips just luscious and you know eyebrows is perfect you know it, it's something in you that's like oh that's nice you know oh what if i can get my eyebrows like that oh, her skin is so smooth and after a while you start googling how to get clear skin what's the best makeup you know he said love not the world neither the things that are in the world there is a, a, an attraction that will come through your flesh that will try to make you want the things that are in the world. And so you have to be intentional about putting a separation Amen. between you and the world. Amen. Some things you might feel like, well, it's not sin. 
my 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 daughter, I think she was she might have been eleven at the time. She noticed a fad. Everybody was getting these little puffball keychains. Little, little cute little puffball keychains. She thought it was cute too. Asked her, did she want one? She said, no. Nah. Why not? Because everybody in the world getting it. And I don't want to be like them. <laughs> I don't want to be like the world. You have to make that declaration in your heart. I don't want to be like the world. No, is it a sin to have a puffball keychain? No. But I don't want to be identified with you. I want to be separate. I want God to look at me and be pleased with my life. Do I have an attitude? No. It's okay. You can have a keychain. That's just something that I don't want to do. And so you have to make a conscious decision. Amen. God, he... In the Old Testament, he made it clear. He made it clear. Mm -hmm. You are my people. You are holy people unto me. You are peculiar. Amen. You know what peculiar means? You stand out. You don't blend in. When people see you, they see a difference in you. And God knew how dark this world was going to be. There are some people that are hurting. Children going to school. Can't wait to get to school so they can eat a meal. All right. Can't wait to get to school to escape the abuse from their parents or their step parents. All right. And they're they're not caring about no puffball keychain. They're not caring about no Jordans and no hairstyle. All right. They're looking for a light, Amen. somebody to be a difference that can tell them Jesus loves you. Amen. There is hope beyond your situation. Amen. You can call on God and he can deliver you. He can change your mother. He can change your situation. Amen. But if you're too busy blending in, they can't see the light. Right. All right. All right now. You're too, bl too busy looking like the world. You look just like them. They don't know who to go to for help. Right. God might be trying to put them on your heart. Go go to um, oh, Justin. Go to Justin. See, you go to school. They homeschool of <laughs> Go to Justin. <laughs> Justin got some word for you. You need to be a light to where they can say, yeah, Justin is a nice guy. You know, I, I think I will go talk to him. But if Justin around there being a bully because he's the tallest kid in school, <laughs> you know, God know he got some truth, but he ain't going to send him your way. Or if he do, they're going to be scared to come to Justin. And so we got to not try to blend in with this world. Amen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He said, if any man love the world, if you love this world, you love the Father, not in you. Amen. You got to take it for what it's saying. If I love this world, then that means the love of God is not in me. Amen. Then Lord, help me to get this right. world out of my heart. I don't want this. I do have a desire for these things. I see stuff and I just run after it. <laughs> but Lord, I don't want that. Take that away from me. I want to desire you. Take it out. Amen. He said, you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Stay in his word. Abide in him. Amen. Amen. He'll help you get the word, the world out of your heart. Amen. Amen. He says in... Psalms 119 and 9, he says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? He asking a question. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Yeah. That's how you clean your way. Take heed to the word of God. Right. You take heed to the word of God. You listen to instruction and then you obey it. You apply his word to your life. You cleanse your way by taking heed to the word of God. First Kings, the 13th chapter. And we're not going to read the whole thing, but some of us know the story and some of us are here for the first time. But we're talking about abiding in the word of God. And there was a man of God who came out of the land of Judah. And God had sent him a word mm -hmm. to go and tell the king. Right. And God had also told this man of God. He says, don't eat anything in that place. Don't drink anything in that place. 
And he said, don't go back the same way you came. Okay? So leave out a different way. And so when the man had went to the king, verse 7, and the king said unto the man of God, come home with me and refresh thyself and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way, and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. And so we see this man of God standing strong, you know? This is the king. You know, that's that's pretty high. That's like, you know, not that we would want Donald Trump to invite us to his house. Some of us would, we might have word from him. But that's like the president, you know, of, of the country saying, Hey man, come on to my house and come eat with me and refresh yourself. And you might feel like, you know, this is a high order. You know, people gonna see me going to the president's house. I'm gonna take a couple selfies and, you know, put it up on Instagram, Facebook. They are gonna see me with the president. But this man of God stood his ground because he had a higher calling. And man, the one who created heavens and the earth had given him a word. He said, don't eat, don't drink in that place. And so the man of God, he didn't hesitate. He said, no, um, I got a word from God. And um, I can't stay here. I'm not going to eat here or drink here. He, he turned it, the king down. Mm -hmm. And then he went out another way. See, we got to stand strong in what Amen. the word of God says Amen. for us to do. Yes. You know, when you, when you um, sever ties with them old friends, mm -hmm. they start coming up with names. I don't know the new name they got nowadays. But they used to call us lame and, you know, you boring. You'll never have fun no more. Oh, you can't do nothing. And so you got to decide, am I going to let these things, you know, pull me back to what God has separated me from? Or am I going to abide in, in the Lord? He told us what? Not to have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. So are you going to abide in Christ? Or are you going to go hang out with your friends? You got to make a decision. And so the man of God made a choice. He said, I'm going to stay with God. He told me not to do this. I'm not going to do this. And so then we see, here comes another man after the man of God. He heard about him. Heard about the things he prophesied. He heard about him. He sent his sons to go, go find him. Go see which way he went. And tell him to come back to the house. And so he told them the same thing. He said, no, I'm not going back with you. He told them what God had said. And in verse 18, he said unto him, this is what the other man said to the man of God, I am a prophet also, as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Yep. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but cameth back, and has eaten bread, and drunk water in the place, of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread, and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass, to wit, for the prophet whom he had brought back, back and when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. You see, this man, this other man came and said he was a prophet. I mean, the devil ain't got nothing new. <laughs> Amen. That's true. Has he not sent people to you talking about, 
prophesying, the Lord told me to tell you. And then you have a choice. Are you going to believe what they say? Are you going to stick with what the Word of God says? Right? Are you going to believe what's going on around what the false teachers and preachers, they're false because their message is not the same as Christ. So that makes them false. Right. People are afraid to call false preachers false preachers. Amen. And then they'll say, well, I just go there and pick out the good and throw out the bones. That's what Nobody eat bones anyway. <laughs> the whole message is supposed to be good. Right. And if you can't receive the whole message, then something is not right with that preacher. Right. Something is false. Amen. He is a false preacher. Right. You need to pray for him that he'll get right. I don't know when he innocent and what he knows. It's nothing innocent about leading people to hell. Right. Amen. When the word of God is true and it's clear that a child can understand. Jesus said, except you come as a child, you cannot even enter into the kingdom. And so it's so simple that a child can understand what it means to be saved. Amen. That we can live free from sin. Mm -hmm. And that we need the Holy Spirit. But if they are false, they're not teaching the same message that Jesus taught. And so this false prophet came to this man of God and said, well, an angel came and told me mm -hmm. that it was okay for you to come. Right. He lied to him. And he was, oh, okay, I ain't your kid. I didn't know that. <laughs> we ain't. <laughs> Wind drop. The word said, you disobeyed the word that came from the mouth of the Lord. From the mouth of the Lord. And you did not keep his commandment. There is no good coming to us if we decide to step outside of the commandments of God. That's right. When we decide to disobey, I don't care about whose mouth it came from. There is no good coming to us. Amen. And when he went, the, he went out of that man's house, a lion met him and slew him. And the, the, the ass stood there next to the lion, and it was just showing us the lion wasn't hungry. He could have got that donkey if he wanted right. to. That lion would sit there on assignment because of that man's disobedience. Right. So if you're going to be for Christ, you need to be for Christ all the way. You got to sell out. Sell it to the death line, as they used to say. For God I live and for God I will die. You got to know his word and stay in his word. Stay in his truth and don't let anybody come and deceive you. Amen. Amen. Don't let anybody come with their message Bible reading you a different version so you can get a different interpretation of the scripture right. and now you have a new enlightening of what that means. All right. You better go back to the King James. Because right. all of these um, versions of the Bible are perverted right. versions of the Bible when they twist the scripture and they change the truth of God's word. So it can fit them, so they can be comfortable. You see, that's why in the days of Ahola and Aholaba, they went out and they worshipped their false idols. And then they came to the house of the Lord, lifting up sacrifices to him the same day as though he was going to be pleased with them. People are living double lives and double standards, thinking they're holy and they're not. All right. They're living a life that's contrary to the word of God outside of the boundaries that he has set for us. And God is not pleased. God is not pleased. See, if the man of God had abided in the word that God had spoken to him, his life would have been preserved. He would have lived. His story is left on record to show how he walked with God one minute. He was delivering God's word one moment, and then the next moment he fell because he decided to step outside of what God had said for him. Amen. See, in, in the boundaries that God has set for us, we are protected. We are safe. We have life. But when we go outside, there is death that is waiting for us. There are spirits that are waiting to overtake us and bring us into darkness and lead us into a devil's hell. 
Our last scripture is Matthew, the fifth chapter. Verses 14. Jesus again is speaking and he says, Ye are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Mm -hmm. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Right. You are the light of the world. When you have Jesus, you have the light. Amen. When you have his word abiding in you and guiding your life, you're allowing his word to be that lamp unto your feet and that light unto your path. Right. You are the light of the world. We're not to be hid. We're not to be... Um, Afraid and ashamed to show our light. Oh, I heard you was a Christian. Uh, well, you know, my mama is. Uh, no, be the light. Amen. Yeah, I do. I, I believe in Jesus. Are you a Christian? You know, be the light. Amen. How come, how come when we always picking at such and such, you don't laugh? What, you know it's funny? But like, I don't think it's funny. I don't think it's nice to pick at me. You're being the light. Amen. You're being the light. Amen. You, when you tell your friends, don't talk to your mom like that. I used to have some, in high school, little girls talking to their mom, so disrespectful, cursing at them, calling by their first name. Don't talk to your mom like that. Oh, we cool, we got a relationship like that. God don't um, have no respect for your relationship. Amen. He's not with you disrespecting your parents. Amen. And so he's like, don't talk to your mom like that. You know, that's, that's not cool. You know, you know you're going to shorten your days if you do that. You're being the light. Amen. Mm -hmm. You're helping them to see a different way. Amen. You're helping them be able to make a clearer Holiness. choice. You are the light of the world. Holiness. If you hide your light, then how will they see? Right. If all the lights go out in here and it's pitch black, we won't see. We'll stumble in the dark. We'll fall. We'll hurt ourselves. But if somebody were to hold up a light in the time of darkness, then we'll be drawn to that light. And we'll come out of darkness to the light. So many people are in darkness right now, and they're looking for a light. Ye are the light of the world. God said he had separated Jerusalem and and Samaria, they were his. They belonged to him. They were supposed to be representing him and how they lived. And they were supposed to be an example to the nations. But instead, they started looking at the other nations and started doing what they did. God doesn't need a people like that. Amen. He doesn't need us to be as they were, looking at other nations. Amen. Looking at other congregations. That are not following holiness and righteousness and saying, why can't we do that? Why don't we have this I over know. here? Why, why can't we see? They looked at the Assyrians and they were putting their children through the fire. In some kind of way, they thought that was a great idea. We can worship our God like that. Let's put our children through the fire. <laughs> yeah, right. And you might think, that's dumb. We would never do that. But when you see other congregations and they're allowing dancing to go on in the sanctuary, in the house of God, in the name of God, and, and, and some of these things that they're doing, you just know it's not holy. They're allowing all kind of things to come into the church house in the name of ministry. This is the children's ministry. This is how we do it. Some of the children are not even saved. And I know this because I talked to some of them. I'm, I'm over the dance and not even saved. When you see that and say, oh, they're doing that to worship their God, let's do that too. Mm -hmm. Then you are just like them passing your children through the fire. Amen. You're causing the wrath of God to come That's against right. them. Yeah. You're sacrificing your own children right. to idol God. Yeah. And God is not pleased. Yeah. God is not pleased. He said, you are the light 
of the world. You are the light of the world. He has chosen us to be the light to this world, to be the light in our generation. We can't shine in Ezekiel's day. We can't shine in Noah's day. We can shine right here today in our day for our generation, for our grandparents, for our cousins, for our co-workers and our schoolmates. We are the light for their generation to help them to come out of darkness. So he said, we are the light of the world, a city that is set on the hill. We cannot be hid. We have to abide in his word and allow his word to abide in us that we may continue to have the blessings and the mercies of God on us. Amen. Amen. Let us